Hi, this is Paula. Welcome to part three of my guest design team for Susan Taylor Brown and her Etsy store, Poppiness. In today's video, I will be finishing off everything I made in part two with Tim Holt's Distress Ink by Ranger Industries, as well as making a couple of extra items for the finished Pirate Junk Journal. Right now you can see I've got a couple of tags that I'm making. What I've done is I've got some vintage book pages and I've trimmed off one side of the white paper on the edge. I've torn the page in half and now I'm sort of measuring it up so I know roughly where to glue and I'm going to stick each bit down onto the front of the tag. I'm using my trusty glue stick just because I find that it sticks everything in place but more importantly it dries pretty quickly. Of course you don't have to use a glue stick if you prefer you can use a liquid glue or even a tape runner anything like that as long as it does the trick. I'm now going to put the pieces aside and let them dry for a wee bit just before I cut them because as every crafter and artist knows the last thing you want is wet glue on your scissors. So just finishing that off, putting the paper in place, just lining it up, but I am going to trim them top and bottom and also make sure that I haven't got any excess on the side. So now that that book, vintage book page has dried, I'm just going to trim that off with my scissors, making sure the corner lines up with the edge of the tag. And then these little wee bits you can either keep or throw away. That's entirely up to you. But I do try to keep as many of the larger bits as possible. So now that I've got these stuck down, I'm going to pull, uh, pull back all these bits that I left and had left over from cutting out all the envelopes and pockets. This is what I would have mentioned about keeping these aside so that you can reuse them. Because you've printed them out, you want to get as much use as you can from these beautiful printables. And they are gorgeous. So keeping all these larger bits allows me to then use them in decorating and embellishing tags, um, envelopes, anything else that I can find to put in the junk journal. And here I'm just fussy cutting out a compass that was absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't not use it in the journal. So I'm just fiddling a wee bit to find what piece of paper I want to put where out of these excess scraps. And I just trim off roughly to, to fit so I know kind of where I'm going to put it. And where, that's, where it's going to hang down on the tag, I've just given it a torn edge. It's a nice simple technique, pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of walnut stain ink on the edge just to emphasize it and to break it up a little, bo a little bit because it is kind of a, a monotone color scheme there. Just put that on the edge. I'm going to stick it in place again with my trusty glue stick. And let it to dry before I do come back and trim the edges so it fits perfectly around those odd shaped corners. But you can see just through adding that little bit of ink, it really does show up that edge. Now, I tend to do all my inking at once. So rather than finish a tag and ink around the edges of that, then start the next tag, embellish it, and then go back and do all the inking, I leave everything till the end and that means I don't have to keep pulling out my ink and then putting it away and then pulling it out again. But of course, that's just me. I like to do it all at once at the end. You, of course, can do it however you like. But this is my kind of style. It's what I like. Now I'm just adding some more little wee pieces. Um, I do forget to ink this one. So you will see me struggle later on to try and ink it having already glued it onto the tag. But word to the wise, do try and do any distress inks or edgings before you stick them down because afterwards is just pretty awkward. 
But yeah, using up as much of these little scraps as I can because I really want to get the most out of these printables. And you'll see me chopping and, and using little wee bits, tearing off edges, um, doing some fussy cutting. As much as I can to use these different pieces that have been left over because they are gorgeous. And let's be honest, we want to make sure we're using them. Now, it was round about here that I think I realised that even though I'm pretty good at multitasking, when it comes to crafting and talking at the same time, yeah, not my forte. I could quite easily talk and not craft, or craft and not talk, but it seems I cannot do the two at once. The original video was pretty much evidence of that. So I guess that's something that I need to work on so that I don't have to sit there and do a voiceover after the event. Never mind, bit of practice and we'll, we'll see if we can resolve that issue. Now with my inking, I like to do a three-tone inking. Most people I know only put one colour of distress ink around the edges of their items. That's perfectly fine by, by me. You do what suits you, what suits your style. But for the last, well, from as long as I can remember, I've always liked doing either two or three colours. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this subtle gradient that really just appeals to me. I love the way that the colours blend together. They work magnificently. And it doesn't matter what colours I use, although generally I do use the same sort of colour scheme, but it depends on the, the colours of your project. For this, my first layer will be antique linen. I tend to do maybe half an inch of antique linen. Now that's not exact. It's not exactly a perfect straight line all the way around. Whoops, there I am eating that little bit of excess ink that I missed out. So my antique linen is yeah about half an half an inch. It's not perfectly straight. It does vary depending upon um, what I'm doing and, and how rough I am, but it's all about just really emphasizing that edge and making sure that it's got a good blended color around the outside of the item and it's not just the outside i also make sure i do for instance folds on envelopes so anything like that you really want to distress and give it some some body and and make it stand out from the rest of the journal now I find I do both front and back of an item, even if it's only going to be seen from the front. Um, but again, that's my choice. Yes, I know it takes me you know, up to three times longer, but I prefer the look that it gives me in doing this. The second layer that I do is often vintage photo but it can also be something like tea dye. The colour depends entirely on, on what you want to emphasise. But that I normally do about a quarter of an inch. And again, it's not exact. It's just an approximation. It's all about just getting a little bit more colour and breaking up that half inch of the antique linen. The layering of the colours as you blend them, as you put them down, does tend to blend them and it gives me a subtlety that I absolutely love. So go using those those two and then just finishing off with about an eighth of an inch of walnut stain but more, and more importantly making sure you get that cut edge or the, the actual fold there of the item so that you can't see any white where it has been cut um, or you can't see any of like the manila of the, the tag for instance it just finishes the item off and it doesn't matter whether this is something that I'm going to sell or I am giving as a gift to someone I just like the look of the three 
distress inks layered one on top of the other. When you look at it compared to some something that's just got one colour, you can really see the difference as it stands out. Where even if when you look at it on its own or you look at one that's only got a single colour on its own, it still does look pretty good. But for me, I like the three. Um, always have, probably always will. Now, I'm just, as I said, I'm just finishing these off with the extra bits. In part four, you are going to see the finished item that's the completed junk journal. All 228 odd pages worth. It was supposed to be considerably smaller than that, but I just found so much gorgeous pirateness that in order to include everything in that I wanted, I just had to keep adding pages and keep adding tags and envelopes that I loved. And particularly with these beautiful maps that Susan Taylor Brown has created, they were just too gorgeous not to include. So that's why it's a little bit bigger than I originally planned. And that's why I've had to put it into part four to actually show you the finished thing. But I absolutely love how it's turned out. Um, hopefully you will enjoy it as much as I do. And look forward to seeing the finished item. Now at the end here, I am going to do one extra piece of, well, an extra image into the album. I found on, oh, before I go on to that, this is just showing everything how it's all finished. There's the small pockets, a couple of large pockets that the tags will fit into. There are some mini envelopes. There are some coin envelopes. I've just got sort of two each of those. I've got four of the large envelopes and they're all going to sit in there sideways so that the images are upright. And then out of the excess from a couple of the pages, I have two junk journal pages. So they're all in the, in the junk journal. Now here's this extra page. I found it on a Disney page. It is a printed page of pirate speak and pirate phrases. When I printed it out, I loved the torn edge. Though, to be honest, given that it was printed like that, it did look a little bit fake. So what I'm doing is just tearing it off for real. And then I'm actually going to go around and ink the edge to give it a more authentic looking torn edge. Now with all the envelopes and the tags, I was being pretty gentle with how I did the inking of the edge. With this, because I want it to be a real character piece, I'm actually being a lot rougher than what I have or what I was with all the other inking. I don't mind if I tear the page. I don't mind if I get ink sort of smeared over the front and over the back. I don't mind if I end up with a whole lot of creases and bends in it. Because to me, that's all adding to the character of this, and that's what I want. Even though it's like pirate speak, what I want this piece to be is kind of like a pirate map. Something that a pirate would keep in his journal, or tucked inside a pocket, or tucked inside his vest. Something that he pulls out quite, ref quite regularly, quite often. Um, and refers back to it. On the printed page, if you look very carefully, there were some lines that were actually printed onto it. And these were lines that looked like they were fold lines. And at the bottom of, it, of the page, you can actually see there's some instructions there on folding the, the image into a, like a little wee paper boat. Though I missed that at the time. So I'm just folding along these lines that I can see that have been printed. And I want it to look like this has been pulled out of the pirate's pocket time and time again and looked at. So I'm really emphasizing these folds that 
appear on the, the printed image. And what I'm going to do is, having folded everything and reinforced it with my bone, fold, bone folder, I'm going to go back with my ink, my distress ink, and then colour both sides of the fold. And that is again to emphasise that look of being aged. Because, I mean, let's be honest, a pirate wouldn't have clean hands. So as he pulls this out of his pocket, it would be getting pretty dirty. So that's what the ink will do. I'm also going to add some water towards the end. Um, spray, spritzing directly onto the page as well as dropping water from my hand. So, so there's some pretty big droplets there. And then running the page itself through some ink that I've put on my craft mat just to take away some of that whiteness on the back of the page. Because again, it wouldn't just be the front of the page that was all dirty from the, the pirate's hands, it would be the front and the back. So that's what I mean about adding some character. I'm doing all this little bit of extra stuff just so it doesn't look like a pristine image that I've just printed out yesterday. It's going to look like it's been around and done... Done the, done the rounds for the pirate as he's carried about normal pirate duties, so to speak. So straight away there, you can see how good it's looking. It's looking like it's been around and pretty old. Even adding a few scrunches just to really finish it off. So you can see this pirate speak along with the tags, envelopes and pockets in the final junk journal as it's put together part four so that'll be coming up in the next day or two be sure to have a look at it because i hope that you love the finished junk journal as much as what i do because i loved making it so thank you for spending some time and watching this video and we'll see you